The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 852. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a project manager and an award-winning motivational speaker, author, and coach, and I'm super excited to have her on today to share her story on confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Gail Mariel. Gail, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more about yourself to the listeners. Hi, Sheena. Thank you so much for having me on the show. I'm very excited to speak with you today. As you mentioned, I am a project manager, a motivational speaker, author, and coach. I do hold an MBA degree. Uh, I am in corporate, but I am looking to start my own business and use the entrepreneurial aspect of my degree. I have a very great passion for inspiring women. And throughout the years, I've been recognized as a public speaker. I am very active in Toastmasters and hold an officer position as well. I was also recognized as one of the women, inspiring women in technology last year in 2021 by the Association of Telecom Mobility and IT Management Professionals. I love reading and writing, and I put my passion into use by, again, uh, inspiring women in STEM, especially through publishing blogs and speaking the word. And that's why I am so excited to be on your show. I do live in the Chicago area with my husband and golden retriever. My greatest accomplishment is my college-age son, who is a pilot and plays Division II baseball. So my mission is to really empower and inspire women to overcome imposter syndrome. That is a very interesting phenomenon that a lot of women suffer from. And I would want to help them redefine what success means to them, help them take inventory of their goals, and then help them become warriors with a purpose. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing all that. And that's great. And I remember when you mentioned that you had a son in college, I was like in total shock because, you know, you look so young and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so crazy. And, you know, it's, I, can I just say kudos, you know, for starting, right? Because it's not always easy to transition, right? Um, to start your own thing, especially at an age where we feel like it's too late. It's never too late, right? You'd be surprised how many people are st- still scared to go out there and forge their own path. It takes a lot of courage and confidence and I think we take that for granted or take it very lightly when really that is a huge thing and we need to celebrate that. Uh, So I just wanted to say that and congrats on starting your new venture. And Gail, what's your cultural background? I am Filipino. I was born and raised in the Chicago area. Nice. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? I have a few quotes, but the one that really resonated with me comes from an entrepreneurial coach that I have now. There has been so many reasons that I experience imposter syndrome and starting out my business while being an IT professional is one of them. One of the things that my coach had told me to say to myself and keep telling myself is I am enough. I keep repeating that to myself. And she made me repeat that because I am enough. I have the skills. I have the talent. I have the gift and I have the passion. So why not? I am enough. And then that is something that every woman should say to themselves when they feel their confidence is really low. I love that. And, you know, having those affirmations is important. You know, even if you have just one, one is enough, right? I usually say three, I am enough is one of them. And then I also say I am loved and I am worthy. And I keep saying that until I feel great, until the self-doubt goes away, until the imposter syndrome goes away, because, you know, we all, it, it always creeps up, right? No matter what happens, especially when you're taking on a new challenge or starting something new, we always feel like we're not enough when really we are more than enough. And I know for women, it's a lot harder just because of the things we have gone through and just what society and our culture tells us. So I really love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how do you define self-confidence? Self-confidence is to me, the inner power that an individual has over their skills, abilities, and character without any external influence, positive or negative. I think self-confidence is critical 
to success. Um, that is a, a critical aspect because it has to come from within. It has to come from you. You, you may have influences, negative or positive, as I just mentioned, but something that you need to say to yourself and be comfortable with it. And there's a difference between being arrogant and being self-confidence. And self-confidence is making yourself a better person, being a better version of yourself and being able to succeed in everything that you do. Thanks for sharing that great definition. And Gail, what was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? Well, Sheena, uh, self-confidence is a lifelong journey and a process, right? Uh, When I fail at something, I experience imposter syndrome, uh, whether the negative feeling came from a failure or a challenging situation, even at work. And if I was personally hard on myself or others highlighted my weaknesses, but I internalize everything. I, I, I instead asked myself, you know, what could I have done better? Could I have prevented this from happening or even worse yet? Why did I even think I could succeed at this? I'm in way over my head. So that pattern of self-doubt stayed with me, even though I was trying to improve, I felt deflated and unmotivated. And while I know I had the skills and drive to succeed, especially in, in uh, the professional setting, something was still holding me back. Thanks for sharing that. And I think that's something we can all go through, right? Feeling not good enough to doubt the imposter syndrome. You know, as women, we tend to overthink a lot thinking like, you know, is it, can we do it? Can we not do it? And the only way we'll know is if we just take action, right? It's not going to be perfect. We're going to make mistakes. It's okay that we make mistakes because that's how we learn and move on and grow and realize what we've done wrong or course correct along the way. And so, you know, if we learn to just, take action and, you know, not really think about the rest, we could just, we could go out there and do so much because to be honest, men do the exact same thing. That's how they're able to move forward because they just keep moving forward regardless if they make mistakes, regardless of the outcome. Uh, They'd rather have a result versus, you know, thinking what if, right? And I know it's easier said than done, of course, right? It's, uh, you know, society is a lot harder on women. You know, there's so many double standards we go through, but this is why it's our time now to dismantle that and show them that, you know, we can show up as ourselves. We can be the person we want to be. We are capable of creating the things that we want or creating an, a positive impact in the world. And Gail, what was your, what was that point in your life when you realized, you know, you were more than enough to go out there and, you know, create the life that you want, especially forging your own path, starting something new, because that's totally, it's hard. I mean, I know because every time I start something new, I'm always like, oh my God, can I do this? Oh my God, what if I fail? Oh my God, what what if this is like a hot mess? I mean, what was your aha moment? Well, I eventually got tired of wallowing in my own self-doubt and realized that the key to surviving life's challenges is balancing out my mental health and really redefining what success meant to me. I couldn't control how challenging situations were, but I could shift that focus. That realization made me a warrior in my own battle. And before I knew it, I implemented a few ways to help me gain that positive mental energy to move forward when faced with challenges and situations I couldn't control. Thanks for sharing that. And of course, you know, working on our mental health is so important, especially, you know, during the pandemic, it was really hard for women, right? You have to do like 10 million things. You're not just a person who's working a full-time job or working a business. You know, you have to take care of your children, take care of your family members around the household. And it can take a toll on us, right? That's why, you know, women were burnt out a lot more than men, especially during the pandemic, because there's just so many expectations we have to do. And it's like, if we miss one thing, we're a total failure, not realizing like, you're not a failure. You know, we all do the best that we can, especially in a situation like this. And it's even worse for Asian women just because we're dealing with the pandemic and the racist attacks, right? Asian women are targeted two and a half times more than men. And so the violence against Asian women has risen. And it's like, now we're not only scared of, you know, the things that we're going through, but just our community as a whole. And just, you know, even being paranoid when you walk down the street because you just never know what happens, right? So that can also take a a toll on us. So that's why it's so important to work on our mental health and have support groups where we can have that safe space and realize, you know, we are a warrior, right? We are a warrior. We can overcome these things because we've been able to overcome so many challenges in the past that if we can do it once, we can do it again. And Gail, you know, because of that realization, what's your life been like now? Well, my self-confidence grew significantly. 
And it was that oomph that I needed to get me to pursue opportunities that I never would have even dreamed of. As I mentioned before, self-confidence is a lifelong journey, but personally, I feel secure now that I could always execute the framework that work for me whenever I feel imposter syndrome creep up. I actually have a book coming out as an author, Inspiring Women Professionals Who Boss Up. I am so honored to join this elite group of women as authors, which I do share my experiences with imposter syndrome and how, how I overcame it to succeed. Awesome. And you were so excited that you're one of the co-authors in our Inspiring Women Professionals Who Boss Up book. And I'm sure all the listeners will love to learn how to overcome imposter syndrome, because I mean, that's something we all deal with, right? I don't care how confident you are. Part of you still kind of deals with it, even myself, right? And we have to learn, like you mentioned, having a framework to overcome that, or at least to work through that. So when it creeps up, it's a lot faster to get over. So I really love that you mentioned that and super excited for you to be in this book. And to the woman who's listening to your episode, she may be in her own journey to self-confidence. What would be that one tip you'd give to her? Well, as I mentioned before, Sheena, self-confidence truly comes from within and putting soul searching into practice and documenting your goals will help you identify why you, you experience that syndrome. And all of us go through negative situations we can't control, which really makes us question our competency as individuals, whether it be from personal situations or roadblockers that come up in our careers. How we react to those situations will determine how our success in overcoming those life challenges. One thing I also want to mention is to remind yourself of the words from the serenity prayer. Grant me to the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. Knowing and remembering those words will help you turn your guilt anger, and self-doubt into an opportunity to become a better version of yourself and realize your self-worth. Thanks for sharing those great tips. And if our listeners wanted to get to know a little bit more about you and what you do, or wants to learn how to overcome imposter syndrome, is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, I am available on LinkedIn, Clubhouse, and through my site, gailmariel.com. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. To our listeners, if you want to connect with Gail, you can also head on over to the TaoSelfConfidence.com and search for Gail's name. Her show notes will pop up along with everything else that we talked about. And I really just want to thank Gail today for taking the time to share her story and wisdom with us on self-confidence. So thank you so much, Gail. You're welcome, Sheena. And thanks so much for having me. I had such a lot, uh, such a lot of fun. Thank you. Not a problem. Such an honor having you on the show. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of another amazing woman's journey to self-confidence and we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of the Tao of Self-Confidence. You can order your copy of Asian Women Who Boss Up book by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits.